So hey guys, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be discussing a problem from uh, 636 Div 3, that is the constant palindrome sum. So what does the question states? So the question states that you will be given an array of n integers and you'll be given a k. So you can only change this element to any element between 1 and k. Not beyond that or not below that. So that means only between 1 and 7 you can make this k. Other 6 can be changed to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Only in this elements you can make it. And once you have made changes to the array, the condition a of i plus a of n minus i minus 1 should hold for every i from 1 to n by 2. Now when I mean 1 to n by 2 that means the first element plus the second last element second element plus the second last element third plus third last fourth plus fourth last everyone should have a equivalent sum so your task is to make minimum number of array element changes such that this condition holds after you have made changes to the array so over here uh, the answer is a uh, four why let's assume i want to make x as uh, 10 so what i can do is i can make this as four this as six this as seven and this as four so we make four changes now if you see 4 plus 6 gives you 10 6 plus 4 again gives you 10 7 plus 3 again gives you 10 4 plus 6 again gives you 10 so ultimately everyone is same and this is the minimal possible you can try out all possible changes and you will figure out that uh, 4 is the minimum number of possible changes that you need to make and you just need to print out this 4 nothing else so we don't care where we make the changes what we care is what is the number of changes that we make and that should be the minimum so to do this a uh, problem you need to be aware of the prefix trick so let's discuss what is the prefix trick so the problem states that uh, you have given an n size array and you'll be given l r x q queries and from l to r you got to increase plus two that means for every index one two three you got to increase plus two for every index two three four you got to increase three so from L to R for every index, you got to increase 3. And once you have done that, what is the final state of the array? So let's take the first query. That is 1, 2, 3 and you got to increase 2. So let's increase 2. Let's take the second query. From 2 to 4, you have to increase 3. So this 2 becomes 5. This becomes 5. This takes 3. From 2 to 5, you got to increase 4. So let's traverse from 2. That becomes 9. This becomes 9. This becomes 7. And this becomes 4. So the final array is 2, 9, 9, 7, 4. But then to perform all the queries, you will take Q into N. Why? Because any query can range from 1 to N. So for every query, you might require O of N operations. So this might be a costly operation. So let's see how can we optimize this. To optimize this, you will take a prefix array of size N plus 1. So once you have taken this for every query what you need to do is for l prefix of l will be added with x and for r prefix of r plus 1 gets subtracted by minus x so what is this one so you go to one and add two what is this three so you go to four and subtract minus two next time go to two and add three next time go to five and add minus three next time go to three and add four since there was 3 already, so you add 4, it becomes 7. Since this is 5, you do R plus 1. That means go to 6 and add minus 4. So once you have done that, you do a prefix sum. So you get 2, 9, 9, 7, 4, 0. Take the first 5 elements, which will be eventually equal to your final answer that you required. So we can say every query can be solved in O of 1. And at the end, you are requiring an O of N operation to get your answer. So the total time taken is Q plus N over here rather than Q into N, which is really very efficient. In the question, it is stated that you have to find AI plus A of N minus I plus 1 to be equal. So eventually we are adding two pairs. So what is the minimum possible value of this X? So we can say both the pairs have 1. So 1 plus 1 will give you 2. Or if both the pairs at k and k, which is the maximum possible, you will get 2k. So we can easily figure out from here that the possibility of ai plus a of n minus i plus 1 will always lie between 
2 and 2k let's write down all the pairs if i try to figure out what is the number of changes that i require to make a of i plus a of n minus i plus 1 as 2 what will be that so for this 6 comma 6 the total number of changes that i need to make is 2 that means you have to make both of them as 1 for this it will be 1 comma 1 one change is required for this it will be again 1 comma 1 for this the total number of changes is 2 again so we can say the total number of changes required were 6 so for 2 we required 6 changes now let's figure out what is the total number of changes that we will require for making x equal to 3 so this will get changed to 1 comma 2 which makes 2 changes this gets changed to 1 comma 2 which makes 1 changes this gets changed to 1 comma 2 which makes 1 change this gets changed to 1 comma 2 which makes 2 change so the total number of changes is 6 again similarly you can figure out uh, for all the number of changes for from 2 to 14 and the minimum of them will be your answer so over here the minimum is 4 so 4 will be your answer so what we are doing is we are traversing for all the possible values of x and then doing a linear traversal in for all the pairs and trying to find out what is the total changes that we are requiring so the time complexity will go quadratic and it might and this will TLE. So we have to do something better. So how to do that? So what do you do next is write down all the pairs. So assuming that the first one is the minimum and the second one is the maximum. Like over here we had 7 and 6 but we wrote it as 6 and 7. For x equal to 12, what is the number of changes uh, the 6 comma 6 requires? That is 0. So for x equal to 12, what is the number of changes that this 6 comma 6 requires? That is 1. So if you turn the 6 to 5, you will get 11. So what are the possible values of x that can be made by making one change to this pair? So it can be 2, that means you change this 4 to 1. It can be 3, that means you change this 4 to 2. It can be 4, it can be 5, it can be 6. Now 5 can be easily made because 4 plus 1 is 5 itself. Now 6 can be made if you change this 1 to 2. It can be 7, it can be 8, it can be 9, it can be 10, it can be 11. So we can see the ranges between L plus 1 to R plus K. So we can say uh, for all the possible values of X in the range L plus 1 and R plus K, we will require either 0 or 1 change. Why 0? Because 1 plus 4 will give you 5 which requires 0 changes. And all of the other will require 1 changes. So we figured out a range in which we will require 1 change. Similarly for here, what will be the range? It will be 7, 13. The range for here will be 2, 10. The range for here will be 7, 14. Assuming I make this 7 as 1, so I will get 6 plus 1, 7. Or I make this 6 as 7, so I will get 7 plus 7 as 14. So we have all the ranges. Let's take uh, 3 values of x and try to find out the answer in O of 1 for every x. Let's see how will that work. So we know one thing, there are a total of 4 pairs. So we're going to perform a kind of inclusion and exclusion principle to find that out. So for x equal to 5, if I ask you how many pairs are there which will require 0 changes. So you can look at the hash table. So there is, there is only one pair which gives you x equal to 5. So what do you do is, so for 0 changes, you know you will require one pair. Now let's figure out how many pairs will require one change. So for one change, so you want to make x equal to 5. So we can say this will never give you x equal to 5 because the range is 7 comma 13. Now this will always give you x equal to 5 by one change. Why? Because we can make any number between 2 comma 11 by one change. Now this will also give you 5 using one change. Now this will not give you. So the total number of pairs which give you x equal to 5 by one change is 2 over here but that 2 also includes one of them which will give you a 0 change so you got to subtract that so the total number of pairs now which gives x equal to 5 by making one change is 1 since we were taking this and this we just subtracted the pair which gave you 0 change so if there were total of 4 pairs and to do 0 changes we required 1 pair to do 1 changes we required 1 pair so the total number of pairs were 4 so the number of pairs which required zero changes was one and the number of pairs which required one changes were one. So we can say that the number of pairs which will require two changes will be four minus one plus one. That makes it two. So 
for the pair which required one change we can count one and for the pair which requires two changes we can count two into two that is four so the total number of changes to make x equal to five for all the four pairs would be five so the total number of changes that we need to make in the array will be five to make x equal to five for all of the a i plus a of n minus i plus one you might ask how, how will you figure this out how many will require zero and how many will require zero or one changes so zero changes can easily be figured out with the hash table and for zero and one changes what we can do is we can use the prefix sum trick since we know l comma r for every pair we can add one to all of the index between l and r so eventually for every x we can know what is the exact count of pairs that requires zero or one changes to make it let's find it for x equal to nine so what we can do is let's make the prefix sum array of this. So if we draw the prefix uh, table array, so we will get something like this. So over here for x equal to 5, we could easily get 2 from this prefix table in O of 1. So let's uh, figure it out for x equal to 9. How many of the pairs will require 0 changes? Let's look in the hash table. So for x equal to 9, there are no pairs. So you can see there are 0 pairs which require 0 changes. So for one change is how many pairs so you go into prefix of nine and see there are four pairs which will require one changes so since there were no zero changes we did not subtract anything from four next step how many of them will require two changes since the total number of uh, pairs were four and we have already taken four pairs so the total number of pairs will be zero so since four pairs are requiring one changes to be done so the total count of, over here is four and the total count over here is zero so it will make total changes of 4. Now let's figure it out for x equal to 12. So we can see x equal to 12. So how many pairs will require 0 changes? So you can look out in the hash table. There is only one pair. So one pair will require 0 changes. How many of pairs will require 1 change? We will go into the prefix table and check out that there are 2 pairs which requires 1 changes to make x equal to 12. But one of them is zero so the total pair is one which will require one change so for two changes how many pairs are left that is two because the total number of pairs was four so since we are making one changes for one pair so it is one and since we are making two changes for two pairs the total is four so we get the total count as five so in this way we can find out for every possible x from two to two k and that can be done in o of one using prefix so what will be the time complexity guys we can uh, pre-compute this prefix table in o of n we can have the hash table in o of n and then we can run a loop from 2 into 2 into k so eventually the time complexity stands at o of 2 into k because inside the loop what we are doing is o of 1 operations to get the count so guys let's quickly have a look at the code so initially for the test cases i run a loop and then take the array input and then i initialize a prefix as zero though i have declared it globally but this uh, requires to be initialized every time zero because there are test cases right so every time a new test case comes you need to reinitialize it to zero then the at next time what you do is take all the pairs into a vector uh, so i have stored it as minimum and maximum so that i can easily get the range that i'm looking for so once I've stored it, I've taken a hash table uh, that is a map in C++. Then I've traversed for all the pairs, which is nothing but A of i and A of n minus i plus 1 if it's in one indexing. So when I'm traversing, I'm getting the L that is nothing but uh, the first one plus 1 and R will always be a second one plus K. We figured it out. And the next step, I'm increasing the count in the hash table for the pairs, which will require zero changes. And then I'm using the prefix uh, trick to store all the x uh, for the pairs for which there will be one changes or zero changes then uh, the prefix sum is done after you have done for all the pairs in the next time uh, traverse all the possible values of x that can be the answer that is from 2 to 2 into k and initially store the minimum as n because that is the maximum number of changes uh, that you can do the next step just i count how many have zero that is from the hash table i get as i and then count of number of ones will be nothing but prefix of i that is count of pairs which will require zero or one changes and you got to subtract the pairs which will require zero changes after that i get the count of pairs which will require two changes that will be nothing but total number of pairs that is n by 2 minus pair which will require one change and the pair which will require zero change 
once you have done that so you got to count the total number of changes count will be equal to count 1 plus count 2 into 2 y count 1 because those are the pairs which will require one changes and y count 2 into 2 because the pairs which will require two changes requires two changes to be done so if there are count two pairs so the number of changes will be count 2 into 2 so you add it and for every x what you are doing is we are storing the minimum of all of the counts and so once you have checked for all the possible values of x uh, we can print the minimum so guys this was all about the problem from code forces round i hope you guys like the video just in case you have like the video do not forget to press the like button and if you have any doubts or any comments uh, regarding this video do leave it in the comment section i'll reply to it and do subscribe and do press the bell icon to to get notified every time i post something new